Hello friends. So usually when dismissive avoidance or fearful avoidance say that they feel stuck or trapped in a relationship or they simply pull away, withdraw and isolate themselves, disappear from the world, from the relationship, they go MIA in on WhatsApp or on social media. It's because they feel trapped, but not trapped in the relationship. The relationship is not the problem. The actual prison that has been created through a lifetime of being unheard from their needs being suppressed or neglected, or they were punished for feeling a certain way and expressing their vulnerable selves, that is where they are trapped. So now when they come into a relationship, they cannot access their authenticity. They cannot access the, the feeling part of them and express that out into the world, express what they want, express their boundaries. And that feels like this huge prison. They feel like they're in this pressure cooker. And this is why they feel like they need to separate from the world, isolate, and then they have at this moment, this chance to just you know, I see this as like, you know, after a big meal, you just uh, let go of your pants, like you unbutton the button. <laughs> it's like kind of like that. You just let off the steam from the pressure cooker. And then they can be themselves just all alone. They don't have to feel about being judged or meeting, meeting anybody else's needs. They can just be themselves. So the way that they can be themselves in relationship is by first connecting with their own feelings and needs. So with dismissive avoidance, they tend to be really suppressed. Of course, this is on a spectrum. So some clients that I see have done a lot of work on them. So the avoidance is not that big. They are more aware of their feelings and needs than others. Meanwhile, the dismissive avoidant, when they are at the start of their journey, might be extremely suppressed. I know when I started this journey, I couldn't feel my body. I used to do yoga and exercise and I exercised super hard and I would feel pain. Of course, I would feel stiff, but I wouldn't feel subtleties of emotions in my body. Oh, when I used to go to a Thai massage place, and if you know Thai massage, I used to go for the acupressure, which is basically like thumb pressure. And they also like stretch your body. Sometimes they stand on you, but you put their elbows into you, which can be super painful. But I was so disconnected from my body that I used to go there and say, give me your strongest man <laughs> to work on me so that I can feel something in my body. And you know, for some people, it's not that. For some people, it's like they will engage in risky behavior or seek intensity in relationships and life, seek out the drama. And you will find, especially for fearful avoidance, their lives might be super dramatic. And it's because they are so used to these highs and lows that elicit these sensations and emotions inside of them. But dismissive avoidance are generally like shut down, right? So I was very avoidant, I suppose, at a stage before I knew attachment theory, you know, early on in like 19, 20. So I couldn't feel my body and that's where the emotions live. So the first thing that you can do as a dismissive avoidant, you can just start to feel your body. I call this practice connect the dots. Connect the dots can look like basically track your joints. So think about say the top of your head, which is not necessarily a joints, but there are joints in the, in the skull. Then you can connect to your shoulder and see if you can feel the top of the head, the shoulder, and then the elbow. Okay, top of the head, shoulder, elbow, wrist. And just go through the body like that. Or simple techniques like breathing into the belly. So you can start to feel sensations in the body. Because sensations are emotions in the body. Okay, so that's when you start to connect with your authentic self. And a lot of us didn't get taught how to process these sensations in the body because our parents didn't show us how to. So we are scared of them. So do something, you know, I like to call this the pleasure path. First, start feeling pleasurable sensations. Like when you look at a beautiful flower, see if you can feel what that feels like in your body. Does it open your chest? Can you take a deeper breath? Does it make you feel calm? Or perhaps when somebody puts their hand on your shoulders, does that make your muscles feel relaxed? Or when you're by yourself in your bed relaxing, can you relax your belly or your back or something like that? So first getting in touch with these sensations and making yourself okay to feel. And then we start also learning or 
at the same time, it would be good if you start learning emotional regulation because the more skills you have to emotionally regulate, the more empowered you will feel to feel all of these sensations. They're not going to be so overwhelming. Then once you can feel sensations, you feel your emotions, you are very connected to your needs because every emotion tells you about a need. It's like when you're hungry, you know you have to eat. So that sensation tells you what to do. When you're lonely, you need to call a friend or you need to connect with yourself on a deeper level, do some journaling, do some yoga, do some meditation. So once you've got that, then it's so easy to set boundaries. And just like that, when you start expressing your authentic self and slowly, slowly show yourself in the world, that is going to stop the dismissive avoidant and the fearful avoidant needing to withdraw all the time. And when they do need time alone, because we all do, they can just simply tell their people, you know what, I just feel like being alone and it's got nothing to do with you or the relationship. I just want to have time for myself to meditate, to get into my own energy, into my own headspace. And that can be a conversation that is had instead of having to kind of like steal this time from the relationship or blame the relationship for feeling stuck in it. Let me know your thoughts if this sparked anything in your head. Can you see yourself in this? Or perhaps your partner, your ex-partner, let me know down below. And the next video is going to be about how to stop people pleasing. I'm going to give you a coaching program or, or a little coaching session for uh, stopping people pleasing. So have a look at that one. And thank you so much for being here and listening. I am grateful for all of you on this platform. I'm sending you big love. Ciao. Till the next one.